So I've looked at BMSs before, uh, a board that you can put in place to manage and safely manage your 18650 power supply uh, using these little 18650 batteries. But one of the questions that comes up, and it comes up a fair bit, is when you apply voltage to your pack, does the BMS actually charge the batteries? Well, yes and no. Um, so let's have a look at the details of what happens when you actually apply a voltage to the BMS hopefully with the intent of charging the battery pack. Okay, so just at the moment I have the three 18650 battery bank hooked up with the BMS uh, attached and I'm just draining a little bit just to let the batteries settle. I've got the LED light panel hooked up and it's pulled the average 3.7 volt cells, and each of these were measured at 3.7 volts, pull them down to around about the 3.35, 3.4 volt mark. They'll recover a little bit closer to the 3.7, but I just want to give it a little bit of a drain before I hook up a lab power supply. And what we will do then is we will simulate something like one of these everyday power bricks. All right, this is a 12 volt power brick with a five amp um, current supply but it doesn't deliver constant current and constant voltage the way a proper 18650 battery charger actually would. So if you have a look on the screen now, this is the proper battery charging methodology for a lithium ion cell. Obviously these power bricks don't do that and I'm going to simulate that with the lab power supply. I'm going to give it 12.5 volts of constant voltage and I'm just going to leave the amperage at a maximum of 5 amps and see what actually happens when I try to put power back through the BMS into the 18650 batteries and see how closely or not closely that aligns to the proper charging methodology for 18650s. All right, so what we've got here, um, as I've shown you before in previous videos, is one of these lovely little battery management systems, little battery management boards. I don't quite know if you can read the chip number off that. Maybe you can. Oh, that looks a bit better. So that's the board that we're actually talking about here and that's what we're using. And this one runs three 18650 batteries. Uh, you can get different versions for more batteries. So I've let this settle for the most part. I've disconnected the drain which was the LED light panel and we're sitting on about 3.70 9 volts. This one is measuring the voltage of the single cell that's in the middle of the pack. And this one is measuring the amperage coming through the power supply into the BMS and therefore into the batteries. And as a reminder, 12.5 volts coming out of the power supply and up to 5 amps, it's open, just like a power brick would be. So let's simulate what actually happens here now. Remember the proper charging methodology for the 18650s is constant current ramping up the voltage until it hits 4.2 volts and then allowing that current to drop off but maintaining the 4.2 volts. Obviously we won't really be achieving that here. So let's take a look what happens. Alright, so I'll focus on that voltage just a little bit closer. Okay, so we've already jumped to 3.9 so it's not pushing 4.2 volts or more and it's got 12.6 as the potential supply, 12.5. So it's already up to 3.9, but not cracking 4.2 straight away. So the voltage is climbing. So these are actually slowly ramping up their voltage, very similar to what the proper charging methodology is. Um, the current at the moment, 1.16 amps. Now this is set to five amps. So I have a five amp supply as if I would a five amp power brick, but it's not pulling five amps to be able to charge these batteries. So that's a good thing as well. This is well within the safety limits. This could be three amps because it's being shared over the three batteries. All right, and this is measured from the lab power supply, not from a single battery. So this is being shared between them. So this is only a full 1.1 amp draw. It's only 350 milliamps per cell, realistically. So let's just let this run and See where it takes us. All 
All right, so it's only been about three or four minutes, not quite five. The battery voltage is already up to about 3.98 volts. It's just heading towards that eight now. And the current's dropped down to under an amp, so 0.96 at this point in time. So the first stage of charging the 18650s is supposed to be constant current. Well, you can sort of say that's constant current, but it's below the 1C or even 50% of the 1C, and that's the sweet spot for charging 18650s. So if these cells were two to two and a half amps each, they're rated at three, but realistically they're fakes, so it's more like two. So if they're rated at two amps each, uh, a one amp charge per cell would be perfectly fine, up to a two amp charge per cell, uh, they would take that, um, but as you head up into the 100% so the 1C or even up to 2C, you can rapidly charge them, you seriously depreciate, uh, seriously decrease their life. So at this point in time, 50% charge rate would be one amp each. So this should be reading three amps. It's not, it's reading basically one. So I'm only giving them a third of the current that they should get in order to charge them properly. So that's problem number one. They are still climbing in voltage, right? But obviously I've completely missed the constant current or the proper constant current. Am I charging the 18650s properly and going to maintain their life cycle and putting the most amount of power back into them? No, I'm not. So by doing this, I will get some charge back into the 18650s. But if we are talking about getting the most out of the batteries, I'm probably getting them to an estimated 60% of their charge. It wouldn't be 80. Um, it would probably be more like 50 or 60. So a two amp hour battery realistically becomes a one amp hour battery. So that's not what we really, really want. So the question is, will the BMS charge my batteries? Yes, it will. Am I getting a really good charge? No, you're not. So I hope you found that little bit of information useful. So the BMSs are okay for putting power back into your batteries, but you're not getting anywhere near an optimal charge. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. By all means, give it a video a thumbs up and subscribe, and I hope you'll join me again next time.